Welcome to the Hong Kong Writers Circle podcast, episode 35, first published in March 2018. In this episode, I speak to Fritz Demopoulos, organizer and founder of the Mellon Science Fiction Conference. If you are interested in attending, it takes place this Saturday, 17th of March 2018. Please go to melon x.com for ticketing and the program information. I'm joined today by Fritz Demopoulos, who is the founder and producer of the Mellon Science Fiction Conference. Welcome, Fritz. Hey, Simon. Thanks for having me. No problem at all. And uh, you're joining us from uh, the airport in Beijing, I believe. Yeah, that's right. That new age dragon's back lookalike, I guess you could say. But yeah, <laughs> I am the Beijing airport. Yeah, number sure. Three. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to, to, to talk to me today. Um, you, as I mentioned, that you are the uh, um, in charge of the the Mellon Science Fiction Conference, and I just wanted you to um, tell us a little bit about Mellon. What is it? What are you doing? Yeah, so uh, you know we're a conference uh, we um, which we organize every year in Hong Kong, and our objective is to bring together emerging talents as well as um, established writers from the West and China and bring them together in a very interesting and lively forum where you can have an exchange of ideas, um, creativity, writing, but also science. So um, not only do we have writers, but we have science who, uh, scientists who join us as well. So we have just an interesting mix of people talking about all things related to science fiction in some form or another. Sure. So when I when I attended last year, you also had some film producers, and it, and it really was interesting to bring together these what can be quite disparate um strands i mean they're united by science fiction but you know a, a film producer is really quite different person from a, a short story writer um w- was that um a, a key sort of aim in your mind to 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 do that i mean absolutely um you know science fiction as a larger category has captured the imagination of consumers um we see it from the point of view of book sales games, but also um, television and film. So we thought that bringing together producers and creators of various formats might be interesting. Um, But then at the same time, we thought, you know, maybe it would be a good idea to not only hear what the writers have to say, but what do the people on the business side, on, on, on the industry have to say as well, whether they're producers, finance people, entrepreneurs, and, um, so, so we thought that's just a very interesting mix. And, you know, and what, what, what is interesting, uh, does the creativity impact the format or does the format impact the creativity? And, you know, we, we, we think it goes a little bit of both ways. Sure. I think it's, for me, the, the other um, two sort of strands I think that are brought together are, I, I don't really know how to describe it, but maybe the, the mainstream and the more sort of genre focused. And what I mean by that is, you know, science fiction always has this um, very strong feeling of being, you know, a, its own sort of culture. But on the other hand, you know, some of the most popular movies produced of all time are science fiction movies. I'm especially thinking, you know, Star Wars, Back to the Future, things like that. So I, I think that I think that that is something else that's also um really brought together and especially when um when you're involving you know entre- entrepreneurs and, and and business people in in the discussion as well yeah that's right um i'm glad you brought that up um i i, I think on one hand you have the super fans i guess you could say or maybe the nerds or you know people who are incredibly into it and then we have the more you could say i guess the more casual fan right which are in, in life uh, they tend to watch movies and maybe read one or two books um, and, you know, we're kind of bringing them, you know, both together. And, you know, I, I, I think there is some merit in having the casual fan as involved as maybe a little, as well as the over-the-top fan, I guess you could say. Yeah. So tell me, I mean, I already know, but tell our uh, listeners about the, the, the format. Um, you know, what what actually happens when, when one turns up at Mellon? Well, so what we try to do is, first and foremost, as, as I mentioned earlier, we want to have an interesting mix of speakers. So we'll have emerging writers. Maybe they've written a couple of works. Maybe they've won a few small awards, as well as the much more established writers. So, for example, we have Alan Steele. 
he's a giant in, in, of course, the world of science fiction, as well as Bao Shu from mainland China, who's won a number of awards. Um, but then we also have some up-and-coming writers like Becky Chambers, um, Yun Ha Lee. You know, they've uh, won awards as the best new novel. Um, uh, Chen Zhou, uh, she was the best new British writer last year. Um, as, as well as out of China, like, um, you know, Tang Fei, Ah Chui, these are new and emerging writers that may not be as well known. Um, it's just, so first and foremost, we want to have that healthy mix. Um, but not only writers, we have scientists and, and entrepreneurs. And so, so what fans and I think attendees can expect is just a mix of different people presenting and talking. Now, what we try to do is we try to make sure that we have a healthy mix of presentations as well as fireside chats and panel discussions. Mm. And each one of those three, we can extract different types of information. Sometimes a presentation is a little bit more canned, which is nice in its own way with graphics and visuals. Um, and then sometimes the panel discussion, we have the panelists fighting over each other and trying to one-up each other sometimes, and, you know, and uh, those tend to be a bit more lively. And then we have the fireside chat, and that's where we try to go deep with one uh, writer and or scientist, and we try to do it in a way where, you know, we're asking the questions, we're trying to probe a little bit and really try to understand their personal story or journey, so to speak. And yeah. So we think um, attendees will kind of get, you know, it's, 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 it's just a mix of different things, and, you know, which is, you know, kind of like when you go to, I, I, I guess, a supermarket, really, is you just have a mix of different things, and it's important to try to, you know, touch upon... Of a variety, and, and, and what we hope is toward the end of the conference, um, you know, the end of a, a day of ideas and inspiration, we'll be able to, um, everyone will have a, a nice takeaway, whether they're the super fan, the casual fan, the emerging writer, or maybe the uh, more established player. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you have touched upon your aims um, for the conference. I wonder if you would. Um, speak a bit more about what you hope to get out of the conference you know maybe for yourself personally and, and maybe in terms of the the science fiction community um, in Asia yeah um, yeah thanks for asking that question uh, so melon is a nonprofit organization so it's it, so it's been supported by my personal foundation and what we aim to do is you know, like any nonprofit, we always have multiple objectives and multiple constituents. Um, we aim to make Hong Kong just a more interesting place. I mean, I think the last thing Hong Kong needs is another real estate developer or financier running around. Mm -hmm. What we need more of, of course, are writers, creators, artists, visual artists, um, painters, whatever it is. Um, and we think that um, Mellon might be a, a bit of a conduit. Maybe it can plant some seeds. Maybe it can inspire some people in the city to maybe do more of that. So, 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 so we want to add to the cultural fabric of the city. Um, and it's us, it's, so this is one of our inspirations. Um, and frankly, we picked science fiction because it's emerging. Um, yes, it's a, it, it, it is an established genre in the West. And, H.G. Wells and James Byrne, uh, I suppose if they were alive today, they'd be 200 years old or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but in, 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 in China, which only now is developing a little bit of a tradition in science fiction, um, we're seeing new ideas emerge. And so we think this is the time to maybe, you know, that, that, you know the time is right in history to maybe um, expound upon uh, some of the um, Chinese works that are bubbling up. Um, and then lastly, as you can tell, um, you know, our conference, because we have producers and entrepreneurs and industry insiders, not just the creative talent, um, you could say we're a little bit a bit of an industry conference as well. And why is that? Well, because our writers need help, or maybe they want to get a few ideas on how, you know, as a writer, as a creator of science fiction content, maybe they can... Um, build upon their successes and broaden the scope of what they do. So you mentioned um, the some of the speakers that are going to be um, speaking this year. Who are you particularly looking forward to hearing from? 
Yeah, there's a few speakers I'm super excited about. Um, number one, we have uh, Seth Shostak. He's calling in. So he was supposed to come, but his wife um, broke her leg. So unfortunately, he's going to do a Skype interview instead. And so Seth, he's the senior astronomer of the SETI Institute, Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. And, wow. and you know, I've been a big fan of his for many years. And so he'll be talking to us about some of the latest developments of SETI, some of the challenges they have, and, you know, maybe maybe what can we expect in the next 20 years. So I'm just super, super excited, and it's kind of an honor for us to you know, be, be able to interview him. Mm. Um, a second speaker I'm just totally can't wait to hear about is Bao Shu. So he wrote a book called Three Body X, which is the sequel to the Three Body Trilogy that Lu Tsushin wrote. And he's been winning a lot of awards, and he's kind of this intriguing, quirky character because um, not only does he have a master's degree in philosophy from Beijing University, one of the top tier, you know, learning institutions in China, but he also has a master's degree uh, from Europe, also in philosophy. And so here's somebody who, I think, has an interesting East-West background, writing about sci-fi, and, and also a background in philosophy and not physics or computer science, which many science fiction writers have. Mm. So it'll be very interesting to see what he has to say. So I, I, I think those are two writers that I'm particularly keen on and hearing what they have to say. How would you describe science fiction in Asia these days? I mean, what what is the the state of affairs? It's emerging. Um, that's probably the best way to describe it. Uh, we have. Um, and, and, and I guess to take a step back, you know, why is it emerging? Um, well, it's interesting. Um, Isaac Asimov, uh, obviously one of the godfathers uh, of science fiction, he once wrote that science fiction is simply the, the reaction of humanity to technology. Mm. That's all science fiction is about, how human beings react to technology. And I guess you could extend that to changes in society, you know, industrialization, um, dot, dot, dot. Mm. And with China and India and Vietnam and so many countries in the region um, industrializing quickly, leapfrogging many countries in the West in the use of technology, China is a mobile first country. Um, you know, people in China don't use credit cards, they use Alipay and WeChat Pay. Mm. So we're seeing, um, in, in some ways, you know, China and India, and, and, and many of the countries are really at the forefront of the technological revolution, and they're rapidly industrializing, and people are moving from the countryside to the cities, and so that you can't help but um, you know, write about that in different ways. And so we have all sorts of writers, uh, you know, like romance novels and action stories and detective stories, and uh, you know, science fiction writers are, are, are also capturing that and writing about you know, how does humanity react to all these massive changes? Um, and so I think Asia is really unique to that, only because this is the Asian century. Things are changing, economies are growing, we're seeing leapfrogging of technology. And, and, and so this is the time, I think. Um, um, so when thing, I, I guess another way to think about it is if things don't change or don't rapidly change, um, um, do you need to write about it <laughs> in the first place? Yeah. Right? Yeah, you know, really, and, 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 and frankly, that's probably for every writer out there, right? For every category. But when things are changing, wow, there's so many interesting stories and ideas popping up, and and, um, and, 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 and to me, I, 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 I think that's probably you know the biggest reason why we see this region in particular, and some countries even more so than other countries, which things are just popping up. And um, yeah, great, we're, excited, we're super excited about it. Yeah, it is it's exciting times. What do you see and what would you like to see happening um, in future um, in terms of, yeah, in terms of sci-fi and in terms of, um, and in terms of responding to the, the culture, as, as, you, as you mentioned? Um, I think a few things. Um, I mean, I still believe that the written word is the optimal way for human beings to communicate ideas and um, I think um, unfortunately we've seen too many excesses in future come um, 
And so what I hope to see in the future is that, frankly, more people read. So from a consumer perspective, I hope more people read that will read, and, and I think that will allow more writers to maybe pursue their passion and their craft and really get their ideas. Mm. We'll find, or maybe put more energy into it so they don't have to do three things at once. Um, and, and so that's what I really hope. Um, and, and that means more people have to read. Um, that means our distribution channels have to be, I think, more fair. Um, and I think they are getting more fair with um, some of the more digital platforms. I think that might shift the, the value possibly from publishers to creators. And so I, I, I think I'm, you know, cautiously optimistic about that trend. Mm. Um, I, I, I think um, uh, besides the written word, I, I, I think long-form television seems to be doing a pretty good job The stuff on Netflix and HBO and and and, you know, multi-series shows, I, 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 I think can, and, and some have shown us, can do a pretty good job as well of um, allowing creators to produce, you know, great story ideas. Probably The Expanse is just a, just a brilliant example of that mm. um, on Netflix. Um, and um, so I hope to continue to see more of that. And um, I hope that the Kardashianization of Western television goes away, you know, which is, you know, kind of the more cheap high school sort of stuff just goes away, I hope. Sure. I don't know if that makes sense. No, it does. Although I do sometimes wonder whether, you know, we need the Kardashians in order to have something to push against, you know. Um, if, if if there's no mainstream, there would, there would be no interesting underground. So uh, I wonder whether they live in it... balance. <laughs> Yeah, maybe that's a good. Uh, I guess. I guess that's like saying. Um, I mean, that's interesting. It's like the Michelin star restaurant needs a couple bad restaurants next door. Right. No restaurants. <laughs> maybe that's why these French guys are always <laughs> laughing at the Americans for their food. I don't know. <laughs> so, how can um, people find out about Melon? Give me, give me some details. Yeah. So, I mean, the easiest way is we have a great website. You can access it through your phone or. Or, or desktop, it's www.melon-x.com. So melon-x.com. Uh, that's probably uh, kind of the easiest way to find out about us. Um, we have um, on the website videos from last year, and of course we'll record everything this year as well. And, uh, so, uh, so if you missed last year, you could still see some of the interviews and see what some of our um, writers and scientists and filmmakers talked about. And, um, but, but also, um, you can also look at the program and see what's going on this year. And, and maybe if, if there's a chance to come, you know, we, we'd love to have, we'd love to have, um, you know, fans. We'd love to have writers, you know, and love the network and, 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 and get inspired. Sure. And I can say that um, I don't, Although there are industry professionals and although there are are some pretty big names going, it doesn't it doesn't in terms of being an audience member that doesn't matter at all. I mean, I I was there, and I didn't feel anything was above my head. Everything was interesting. Everything was very very accessible, and I I think that's a a real um credit to to how the to how the conference is is organized and and also to to the speakers that you know that appear. Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, we try to make sure that, um, you know, there's something for everybody, right? Um, and, um, yeah, so so you're absolutely right. You know, oh, we think that, uh, like, very carefully about the types of questions uh, that will be asked. So, so, obviously, like, it's up to our moderators and, um, um, and, and interviewers. We, we, we'd like to give them some editorial um, independence, but we also work very carefully to make sure... Uh, like all the questions we ask and the information we extract is just something that a wider audience can enjoy and be inspired from. Mm. The, my last uh, little question um, is kind of a silly one, I suppose, um, but it was a question that I had before I attended last year, but um, about the language, because we, we've got a lot of writers from um, mainland China. Um, I, I wasn't sure whether it was going to be sort of half in English and half in Mandarin or something like that. But in fact, it's it was all in English, as I remember. Yeah, we, I mean, we offer our Chinese writers the chance to speak in Chinese if they want to. 
Um, but it, it's kind of a bit of a self-selected group, meaning like the writers that we reached out to and who positively responded to us speak English pretty well and are very interested in going to an international conference. Um, and I, I just, um, I think in the future, um, as we grow Mellon, we may have more and more writers who speak in their local language. Um, so we may have more Japanese or Chinese writers speaking in Japanese and Chinese. But right now, those writers that we've invited, um, I think except for only one said, gosh, I don't, I, I don't know if I can speak in English. Do you mind if I speak in Chinese? And of course, she wrote a nice, beautiful email in English to me about this, right? Mm. <laughs> so, so either Baidu Translate works really well, or maybe uh, she's just not as confident and verbally. But, um, but yeah, generally everyone speaks English. Um, and, and again, I, I think it's just a, I think it's the nature of the people that are receptive to us and Mellon. And this is only our second year, by the way. Yeah. So those who are uh, who are receptive to a new type of science fiction conference are those that probably, you know, speak English pretty well, who have been to international conferences before. Um, in fact, many of these Chinese writers we saw in Helsinki at the last Worldcon, mm. and they're all going to San Jose, California for the next one. Mm. Um, and so very, very comfortable. Um, and, and as I mentioned, like Bao Xu got his master's degree in Europe. Yeah. Um, you know, Stan Chan worked at Google. <laughs> um, you know, with Regina Wang, every time I see her on Facebook, she has a Facebook account, which makes her unique, and then she's always traveling the world on, on Facebook. So, so uh, uh, but maybe in the future we'll have more local language, but right now everyone's very comfortable in English. And, you know, that makes, I, I think that gives the conference a bit of a consistency too, right? Mm. Yeah, sure. uh, which which is nice, you know. I mean, all of us have been to conferences where you have to put on the headset and listen to translation, which is fine, and we're we're, we're we're happy to do that. But sometimes there's a nice elegance when everything is seamless, and you're happy to do that. Yeah, for sure. Well, thank you so much, Fritz, for 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 taking the time to to talk to me today. Um, as we're recording this, it's uh, Tuesday, and um, the conference is on Saturday, so. Um, yeah, thank you for taking the time, and yeah, good luck with with the second year of Melon. Simon, you know, thanks for taking the time to talk to me, and we're happy to have your fans and supporters come, and uh, happy to brainstorm and be inspired. <laughs>